Hi everyone and welcome to understanding the differences between AWS security groups and network ACLs also known as network access control lists. Now, when you initially begin working on AWS there are a lot of concepts that you need to learn and this is one that I had real trouble with and uh, I was really confused about it so that's why in this presentation I hope to clear up any confusion that you may have and I'll do that by stressing the important concepts and providing real-world examples of security groups and network access control lists. So let's get straight into it and start off with a nice diagram. Now the AWS documentation as you probably already know is very good however some of it when you first read it can be a little confusing. Now this diagram is not too bad and it has a really good way of explaining the NACLs and the security groups and how they differ from each other. But it can be a little confusing as I said and they also throw in an explanation of it and if I'm not sure about you but if you read this and go through all the lists of a security group at it supports allow rules only, it's stateful and the NACLs is stateless and etc etc I just found it what are they talking about so let's cut to the chase and let's forget about that okay for the time being let's not get rid of the diagram just yet because I find that very useful and I'm going to later on in this presentation uh, bring it back in and hopefully after we've gone through a lot of concepts that diagram is really going to start to make a lot of sense. So this is what I think the important differences are between a security group and an NACL or the concepts that you know I really think you need to to try and commit to memory for at least a good understanding of how it all works. So a security group is the first layer of defense which means it operates at the instance level so an EC2 instance for example okay now it only applies to an instance only if someone specifies the security group when they launch the instance now this can be a problem if you have people in your organization just launching instances and not specifying security groups it makes for a very insecure environment so this is where network ACLs come in NACLs they are the second layer of defense they operate at the subnet level and it automatically applies to all instances in the subnets so it's a backup layer of defense so you don't have to rely on someone specifying the security group okay so in theory you can build yourself a virtual private cloud with subnets and within that you set up a whole bunch of NACL rules and if someone goes in there and then starts launching instances and they don't define security groups then it's not such a big issue because you have this second layer of defense set up so now let's look at a real world example so we're going to go to the AWS console and have a look at security groups and NACLs within that environment so here we are at our AWS console and I've decided to choose the sole region for the simple fact I don't have any infrastructure set up on here already so if we go into our VPC I just wanted to show you what defaults are set up already for you so again keeping in mind I have not set anything up in this region before but I still have one VPC two subnets one NACL and a security group already defined that's up in this area if you want to have a look so let's have a look at our security group that's set up now it's called default which makes a lot of sense it's your default security group and the inbound rules are it allows all traffic and outbound rules it allows all traffic and looking at the NACLs you will see a similar thing of inbound rules and outbound rules and it's pretty much set up to let everything through and the other thing to note here it is it's because it because NACLs are stateless you must create inbound and outbound rules 
they're not created for you okay now don't get too hung up on this stateless and stateful thing just at the moment okay now well let's go ahead and launch a EC2 instance by going to our EC2 console in the Seoul region and as you see we don't have any running but we still have a security group the default one and let's launch an instance and let's pick Ubuntu because I like Ubuntu um, its instance level doesn't matter I'm going to delete this at the end of this but let's just keep it at the free tier level notice it's going to use the default VPC which is fine storage not concerned about it at this point name you should always give it a name but this is only a demonstration and let's get to the important stuff okay so we can select an existing security group excuse me but um, the default one didn't have any real rules set up so that's probably not a good idea so let's create a new one let's call it new set group now let's assume we're going to make a web server so the first thing I want to do is be able to get to the web server and put in any commands by SSH so we're going to choose SSH which is already chosen for us port 22 obviously and let's make sure we have my IP meaning I will be the only one that can access the instance via SSH okay let's add another rule it's a web server so we're going to add HTTP so people can get in from anywhere and let's just also add HTTPS because we're going to probably be using secure protocols as well okay that's pretty much it and let's launch it you can see our rule set up here and notice you're not asked at any stage about setting up NACLs so when you launch an instance remember we said EC2 is first layer of defense at the instance level so that's why they're asking you about security groups and not NACLs which are at the subnet level okay let's launch that now a key pair I don't have any in this region again don't do this at home kids proceed without a key pair because this is just a demo but you should always have a key pair if you're going to have instances launched okay let's launch our instance and it applies everything and the important thing that we're concerned about is the security group that it's set up so we'll go back to our virtual private cloud and we have two security groups set up now fantastic we have the default one which we didn't like and we have our new sec group that we set up and it has the inbound rules of SSH and HTTP and HTTPS and again the H excuse me the SSH is tied only to our IP address outbound rules well, allows all traffic which is fine everything going out isn't a big problem it's all the inbound stuff that is going to be uh, critical to our security okay now let's have a look at NACLs as I said this isn't set up for us if we launch an instance this is something we have to come in and do ourselves and it is at the subnet level so we can go in here and we can set up all sorts of fancy rules um, for inbound and outbound um, let's set an inbound one for let's call it rule 99 it's a custom rule Sorry, let's not make it a custom rule let's make it for some reason SSH we want to block all SSH traffic in to our subnet from everywhere and let's save that save was successful now the other thing to note here 
is that these rules can get very complicated and there are a whole bunch of uh, rules about these rules to state which ones override which ones meaning if you have a deny whether it looks at the deny first or whether it looks at the allow then there's things like explicit denies uh, not what I'm going to go into in this demonstration but just be aware really try and understand these rules if you're going to start fiddling with them and ha how your denies and your allows interact with each other okay we're not going to play around with the outbound rules just really want to show you how you can set up security groups how they're set up at the instance level and the NACLs are at the subnet level and you need to come in and set them up yourself okay now I'll go away and uh, delete everything I've made and um, then we'll go back and wrap it up so here we are back at this diagram which we saw in our first set of slides and hopefully now after the demonstration it's starting to make a little bit more sense if not don't worry and we'll try and break it down even further okay now do you remember t talking about the first layer of defense and where that is can you have a guess the security group and it operates at the instance level which is in our demonstration when we went through and we launched an instance and we set up a new security group and we gave it the rules of SSH port 22 HTTP and HTTPS that's our first layer of defense and it operates at the instance level and we also have a second layer of defense which is can you guess network ACLs correct and where does it operate at the subnet level okay all pretty simple when you think about it and again why do we have this well there's a couple of things you should remember okay as to the reasons why we have it because the security group applies to an instance only if someone specifies the security group when launching the instance now in the example we went through if we had gone in and launched an instance and not given it a security group then that wouldn't have been real good for the integrity and the security of our network now whereas the security group applies to an instance the network ACL automatically applies to all instances in the subnets it's associated with and it is a backup layer of defense so you don't have to rely on someone specifying the security group so if you set up all those rules all your NACL rules correctly on your subnets you don't have to worry about someone going in and launching instances and not setting up the property proper security groups okay well that's it for this presentation hopefully you understand security groups and network ACLs a little better than you did at the beginning and I uh, hope to talk to you again okay bye